Last month, we learnt that Liberate had received money to fund a new coordinator. It's Guernsey's LGBTQ charity. So a month on, how much has been achieved? We've got Ellie Jones, who is the new coordinator in the studio. And we also have uh, Hugo Forrester, uh, who kind of heads up the transgender part of the charity. Let's start with you, Ellie. Uh, it's been a month. It has, yep. Mm-hmm. How, how has it been? Because this is now your kind of full-time role, isn't it? Uh, well, it's it's a part-time role. Um, so I've still got multiple other You've got jobs. got other things to moment. juggle, yeah. right, okay. Um, <laughs> so it's been busy. Um, there's been a heck of a lot of meetings. Um, finding the time to actually follow up those meetings is a... I need more structure for my following up. Um, but, yeah, it's just chaos, really, in, in a really positive, good way. Um, there's so much going on and so much that needs to be done. Um, and it's all progressing so rapidly that, yeah, it's difficult to catch up and keep up because it is just a part-time role. But uh, it doesn't... Yeah, I'm doing way more hours, I guess, than... Uh, but I guess that's the volunteer inside of it, too, so... You're only a twelfth of the way through uh, yes. of, of the funding. <laughs> so I suppose that's the benefit. You know, you've got quite a long time ahead yeah. of you in order to achieve... and. and it was many goals when we spoke you had so many things you wanted to achieve do you think kind of having seen how this month has worked do you think you're going to be able to achieve all the goals that you want to yeah I think so um there'll be one or two that we don't get as far with as um as we would have liked to because initially we did put in for a full-time role um so and, and they're just physically isn't enough hours in the day I think I had a text message this morning of someone saying are you still working 26 hours a day I'm like yeah pretty much um, <laughs> but um yeah I think I most, most bits that in my head for a second I was like I don't know if that's possible <laughs> oh right okay yeah. <laughs> it's a joke <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah we should be able to get through most of it um especially a lot of them it's just starting the process because it's going to be an ongoing thing that will go on well hopefully go on for years and years and years and so what are the kind of uh, the top five list of things you want to have done by the end of the year uh education is the biggest one is um we have an education program that's um hopefully going to be going into the schools mainly with um teaching so uh, tackling homophobic bullying we have an amazing lady called uh ellie barnes coming over who's uh, starting up that so she's taking a stall at pride and then on the uh monday after pride we'll be doing some training with teachers uh, we had an amazing meeting with all the pshe teachers last week um not last week a couple of weeks ago um but that that's the biggest thing on our list. Um, same-sex marriage, um, you know, pushing states to, to go through with legislation. HSSD, uh, coordination, uh, especially for the transgender community. Um, just sort of bringing equality into a lot of the island's policies, really. Um, you wanted five, didn't you? Um, that'll, that'll, <laughs> that'll do. Uh, yeah, yeah. If you think of some more, we'll add them cool. later. <laughs> um, actually, Hugo, kind of touching on the HSSD coordinate, uh, coordinate coordination i was going to say coordination but i don't really think that's a word (laughs) Um, new word i like to make them up um what kind of aspect of that is important for because you said ellie specifically the transgender community okay well um trans the trans part of liberate was started in november last year and one of the main things that we um, have worked on uh, with hssd is looking at the care pathway for transgender people because um we have one, but it's not co- as comprehensive as the the NHS pathway. And of course, because we don't have the f- facilities for trans people on the island, you have to be referred into the NHS pathway unless you go privately. So we've just been um, in discussions with HSSD about how to improve that. Here. So, so how does so what do you mean the pathways? I mean, how does it work in Guernsey if you know if you do want to? Uh... Okay, so um, if you reach the stage where you need to go to a GP and say I think I'm transgender which is obviously a big big deal to reach that point Mm. in your life Um, everybody's different so the path you go down is different for everybody some people don't want to medically transition they'll just socially transition by changing their name and gender and everything else Um, but the people who want to medically transition will be referred to a specialist gender, gender identity clinic in the UK and there's seven of them really heavily over-prescribed, massive waiting lists because the number of people who are coming forward nowadays with this problem, um, from right from very young children to people who are older who now know it's a possibility for them to change their gender, um, has just risen exponentially. So the massive waiting lists in the UK. So basically in Guernsey, if you go to your GP... Um, Your GP will hopefully be supportive and say, "Okay, we will enter you into the system here where you go and you are referred to um, a psychologist to be assessed. 
and then you go through a process of having your referral to the UK and your funding accepted by the HSSD people and then you're referred to a gender identity clinic in the UK for your specialist treatment. So do you think social change and the fact that people know a lot more about transgender is making people far more kind of happy and and feel far more accepted in, in order to go and actually you know that's why there's such a massive waiting list these days. Yeah, I think that's partly to do that um, the increased visibility in transgender people and the um, problems and issues associated with transgender people have obviously been highlighted through um, tr- transgender celebrities, um, which give a co- slightly fake uh, representation of trans people because people like Caitlyn Jenner and Kelly Maloney and all sorts of other people, their transitions... Um, obviously heavily funded Mm. you know they've got a lot of money to do it themselves and it's not really like that it's a very long process and can be a very arduous process um without the support that you might have without that amount of money Uh, but of course it does raise visibility it brings it into the public um eye for discussion and that's that is a good thing i suppose when people kind of look at the celebs and they've almost got to think it's the same parallel as just any celeb you know you look at a celeb and you think that's what our life should be like but it's not at all it never is is it yeah Um, i mean the the big issue sort of really is is not having the backup as well uh, from a um, a psychological point of view from, I mean, up to 50% of trans teenagers attempt suicide. 50%? And it's 50%. That's frightening, isn't it? It's really frightening. I mean, we're very lucky over here, I believe, that we actually haven't had any fatalities. Um, but it is something that we, we need to push with HSSD from a mental health um, position, really. Mm. I mean, from the mental health position, I suppose as difficult as it is to to come out as trans it's also difficult to admit that you are feeling any sort of mental health problem either you know uh, so, so actually getting people to talk from the outset that's one of your biggest challenges it must be yeah which is you know we can achieve through um education and acceptance and promoting equality um for everybody so that you feel safe enough to be able to to you know say what's on your mind and come out openly and the kind of you said it's an arduous journey, the medical um, reassignment. Does is that why some people choose not to go through that? Um, possibly, but the thing about being trans is that it is a very individual thing, and whilst you do have um, psychiatric assessments and reports, you know, to help you choose your path, um, everyone is different. So um, it's what you want out of your journey to make you feel comfortable in life and in yourself. Well, we're in the studio with Guernsey's LGBTQ charity Liberate. We've got Ellie Jones and Hugo Forrester in the studio. We'll return to our discussion in a few moments after Nick Kershaw. It's BBC Radio Guernsey and Ollie Gue talking to Liberate, Guernsey's LGBTQ charity. We have Hugo Forrester and Ellie Jones in the studio. Um, Hugo, let's. I just wanted to ask you, uh, for, for a lot of people, and I think I'm in this camp, I don't really know a lot about transgender people. I don't, you know, I don't know kind of how it works. I think, mo- you know, most people are becoming far more accepting, but still probably don't understand it. Is is that OK? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, OK, so in its most basic form to explain it, it's uh, if you identify as transgender or gender non-conforming, it basically means that your gender identity doesn't match with the sex assigned to you at birth. And that really exists on a, on a spectrum. So you may be born male and you may just feel that you don't identify with any of those male characteristics of your personality or, or your body. And as I was saying before, um, the pathway that you go down can, can range from full medical transition to the opposite gender or just a social transition and so you can have a social transi- transition you can have part medical yeah. transition for everyone it's yeah. different yeah correct and i think that's probably one of the areas where people completely de- <laughs> you know yeah. would would assume that you always go down the route yeah. of a full medical transition yeah. so it's personal to each individual Absolutely. and do you think i mean the education around uh transgender do you think within about five years ten years maybe it will be a, a non-issue people won't even think twice they'll know exactly what fingers crossed let's (laughs) let's hope so let's hope so i mean as we were saying it's all about respecting just other human beings you know not everyone understands everything about everybody else and you're never going to know the full kind of 
situation or the feelings of about being transgender but but um finding out and educating yourself and um, being respectful is just about treating other other humans equally really and I, I think as well um sort of just picking up on something that hugo said um who decides what you know are masculine traits and feminine traits it's yeah. just been a societal thing that's mm. happened over generations that people assign, you know, I don't know, playing sports with men and... You must wear makeup if you're yeah, a woman. Yeah, yeah, exactly, and that you can't sort of mix the two. You know, I've got friends that play sports and wear makeup, you know. Oh, shocker. <laughs> you know, no, no. It's not OK. <laughs> yeah. um, so, you know, it's, it's just changing society's idea of, of being stuck into those brackets because we always want to box everybody into just a certain thing and it's not that easy. Well, it, it shouldn't be that way, I guess. Yeah. If you think about if you think about the the way the world is divided into the binary of male and female, and actually think for a minute about what you think is manly or womanly, it seems bizarre sometimes when you look at it because the people just aren't like that, and it's far more fluid than people give it credit for. Yeah, and I, I think you know even along the because I I was I've got four sisters. I think I've got probably some more kind of womanly traits about me. I love shopping. <laughs> Those um, heels you wear, you. you know. I'm not the I'm not the burliest manly man, but it, you know it's not either or, is it? It's no. not you are either a big burly man or a dainty feminine woman. It, that there is a crossover. Yeah, um, and it just depends on where that crossover happens for you and how you feel about your own gender identity, yeah. um, and so. What's next for the transgender community in Guernsey in order to increase that awareness? And what do you want to to do here in the island? Okay, well, we want to say to anybody who is either questioning themselves or they've got questions about, you know, a family member. I've had parents ask me about traits of their children and things like that, that that you're not alone and we can offer um, advice and education and signposting to resources that can, can help you. Um, we want to carry on working with, you know, the medical professionals to make sure they're educated and they can provide a really efficient service for transgender people. Um, and included in that, hopefully, we are going to get a transgender um, healthcare leaflet published and hopefully distributed to GP surgeries so that's something for people to pick up and look at with basic facts in. And talking about um, things which might become non-issues in, in the future, do you think that's going to be the route that same-sex marriage goes down? Yeah, we've actually had a really good update about same-sex marriage, actually, um, last week. We just uh, want to probably go back and ask a, a few other questions, but um, the first chance that the states will have to put it before the states, the law's basically written, so yay! <laughs> um, so it goes in front of the states on the 21st of September uh, for them to ratify, I think is the word, um, and then it goes off to none other than Whatever the Queen, that means. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, who hopefully will say yes and give it her signature, which can take up to about uh, six months, I believe, so hopefully we'll be hearing the sound of very camp wedding bells <laughs> come sort of uh, spring, summer is next there, year. Is there a, a more camp wedding bell? Like, <laughs> I guess not, good point. What would it yeah. sound like? <laughs> good point. Yeah, sort of bonging out YMCA yeah. or something really <laughs> horrendously ca- a cliche. Yeah. Now that would be a feat of strength, if we be able to YMCA on wedding bells. I, I, yeah, wow. I'm putting you down on the list for that. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I'm going to be the church bell ringer for the day. Um, so, have you seen the the writing, the law in in writing? No, we haven't seen the the uh, what it actually contains. Um, we believe it follows either the, the most of the UK or or Scotland one or a mix of the two, uh, which is where we have some questions about it. So, um, but yeah, we we got notified and we're just going to have a quick meeting with everybody to see um, basically to put all the questions together. Um, but it's just fantastic news that it's going through so quickly and the states have followed through with pushing that through so quickly. Excuse my naivety, but how would would same-sex marriage also address um, tra- the transgender community then? Um, it's one of the questions this we is, have. This is an interesting point because um, by all accounts now I am male. I am medically transitioning, but I have a male um, I, indicator in my passport and all my documents are male based so in theory when i marry my partner claire note when <laughs> um, um, uh, it will be a heterosexual marriage um so actually however, it's not a se- you wouldn't go through the same sex marriage route oh right interesting <laughs> wait um, the, 
there, there is a really interesting quirk with, um, or not quirk, it's given it a little bit too of a politeness, I guess, um, within the UK law, I believe, or is it Scotland? One, one of them, I think it's the UK one, isn't it? Um, where there's this thing called a spousal veto. So if you had a same-sex marriage, um, I, I, I'm not sure whether it works the same way with with, uh, with heterosexual marriage, um, that... The spouse, if the the other person decides to transition, can actually veto the actual transition or the, the paperwork, I believe. Um, so th- there's this kind of weird quirk where they can stop um, their partner transitioning um, on a on a paperwork level because of a, a bit of the law. So it's something that one of the points that we want to check which route they've gone, whether they've gone the the spousal veto route or the non-spousal veto route, which we hope they've gone the non, obviously. I suppose, uh, you know, once the law's passed, it doesn't really matter which which way it goes. Well, it kind of does, because if you enter into... Because the two laws are different, there's a, 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 an opposite-sex marriage and a same-sex marriage. Mm. They've got slightly different laws, even though you've got the same rights. Um, they're different laws, so they don't necessarily... You don't get the... If you go into one, and then you basically... So you're in a same-sex marriage... And then one of the partners transitions uh, because they're trans. It then is no longer a same-sex marriage. So you, in theory, it should just convert to a heterosexual marriage, but it doesn't because that person can veto the paperwork. Does that make sense? Kind of. Yeah, it's, it's crazy it's though, com- isn't it? It compl- should just why be. Why don't they just make one one marriage law for everybody? Yeah, <laughs> It'd be you, easier, wouldn't it? We ask that question too. <laughs> In the UK, you have to have what's called a gender recognition certificate. And basically, you reach a point in your transition where you apply to basically um, HMRC um, and you go before a panel to actually validate your your new gender. Um, And then they will basically reissue things like your birth certificate. You physically have to go. You physically have to turn up, yeah. Um, uh, Things like your birth certificate. And then you are officially under the kind of UK government law um, considered the gender that you are you know, requested to be in. We don't have the facility to get a gender rec- recognition certificate in Guernsey and they are in the process of trying to um, get the law approved to obtain a GRC in Jersey. They're a bit further ahead with things there. Again, so it's something we'll be working something on. Something you're working yeah. on in the next year. <laughs> Uh, We're going to return to our discussion, take another short break for a bit of music. It's 25 to 12. Hopefully you can stick around. Ellie Jones and Hugo Forrester. BBC Radio Guernsey, 20 to 12. You're listening to Ollie Gu in the studio with Ellie Jones and Hugo Forrester from Liberate, LGBTQ charity here in Guernsey. Doing a lot of great stuff. They've got a new coordinator in the form of Ellie, uh, funded uh, to try and achieve as much as possible in the next year. What's it, seven years' work in one year is what you're aiming to do? Yep. (laughs) <laughs> nice. Yep. That sounds really Just easy. Just a small mission. <laughs> Just a small task. Um, I wanted to ask about transgender toilets, Hugo. Um, do, I mean, is it a, is it a good thing, or would you just like? to use the normal toilets i that was what the first thing that came to mind when i saw the transgender image on a you know in front of a toilet why not just use the normal toilets well hopefully there won't be such thing as a transgender toilet because um <laughs> um it's more about being gender neutral so people oh, okay. who so people who don't fit into the male or female binaries um can use a toilet or a facility that they feel more comfortable with being gender neutral. And um, obviously that benefits other people like parents with children who are of the opposite sex or people with disabilities who have carers of the opposite sex. So there's quite a lot of advantages of gender neutral toilets. Um, For trans people, they're going to use the toilet facility which they feel most comfortable using. And if anyone else has an issue with that, then that's their issue. Yeah. Um, it, I think the problem has come about when um, sometimes people have... Or it, I've heard it said before that people have been told to go to the disabled toilet. Now, that insinuates that if you're trans, you um, you know have a disability, which, of course, is not an acceptable thing to say. So that's why gender-neutral toilets are becoming um, more prevalent and they are m- more useful. So far better to have the gender neutral toilet yeah. than to not have it. Well, I mean, it's what they do in France. Yeah, you know, you go anywhere in France. I mean, there's simple ways around it. You could have pictures of a urinal for one side and stalls for another. Um, I mean, you, you only have to go back, what, about 60, 70 years ago. And they used to segregate toilets for black people compared to white people. 
I don't know whether he looked shocked by that, Ollie. You're a little bit younger than I yeah, am. Yeah, so, I am shocked by that. Um, and, but then Google when you it. Think, yeah, <laughs> you actually think that that is mad, but that is what they used to do. Yeah, that's what you know. That and that's how far we've come in, um, you know, civil rights in general. And this is just the next hurdle, you know. And, and sooner or later, um, well, we hope anyway that people will. You know, just well, get over it, really. I guess. I just need to pee. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. That's it. There's a great actually video doing the rounds at the moment of uh, Cindy Lauper and the cast of Kinky Boots. Isn't yeah, it? I've seen it. It's brilliant. Um, that, that's all about. Yeah, no, it's called like just pee, isn't it? And it, it's hysterical. Like you should, yeah, you should have a look and put it up you on Facebook. Shouldn't have to think right? so hard about where you no. get to the toilet. No, no. no. <laughs> uh, and uh, you mentioned Ellie about the Equality and Diversity Awards. Yes. Um, so Liberate have just announced a, a week or two ago. Uh, we're going to be hosting the first Equality and Diversity Awards. First one will be held in Jersey uh, just before, um, well, in between the two Pride events uh, on Friday the 16th of September, I believe, um, sponsored by HSBC. And um, we will be engaging with the community and businesses um, to put their businesses forward or their employers, employees. Um, For the awards, um, there is a website I can't remember what the address is. Just now. I think it's actually on the back of our uh, the jersey ones to liberate je, um, and there's some information on there. But there'll be a lot of information coming out. Um, so yeah, that's going to be uh, really interesting. It's, it's complete equality and diversity from anything from age, sex, sexuality, gender, uh, gender identity, um, religion, race, everything really. So um, you know, if you've got anybody or know any companies that have been great at just championing, champ. Championing. <laughs> Championing. Championing. That's the word I'm looking for. <laughs> um, diversity or equality within the workplace or within the community, then put them forward. Um, and then we'll be having it in Guernsey the following year. So, Fantastic. And, and actually picking up, you said age was one of the categories and you mentioned young people who uh, come out as transgender. How often does that happen? I couldn't tell you statistics wise, but I know that the reports from the NHS over the last couple of years have said that there are massive a massive increase, um, like tenfold increase in children under 10 um, displaying the signs of gender dysphoria or confusion about their gender. And that's where, you know, that's where the, basically the demand has had to be met in the UK uh, and realise that people are wanting help with this kind of thing. What would you say to parents who have no idea how, how to deal with that situation and they're not sure how to address it and how to talk about it? Try and keep it as positive as possible and as open and as loving and just, you know, say that you love and support your child no matter what. Um, and just research yourself, just educate yourself as much as you can. There's lots of resources out there. Um, I mean, you can come to us, Liberate for resources, um, but there's YouTube videos and help pages. And then once you're armed with that kind of thing, if you want to make the step to go to the doctor to ask for further help, then you know, that's the next step. What's your one message for the islanders of Guernsey to to kind of you know, improve that education around transgender? Just respect and support people, um, no matter who they are, really. And the same goes for, for trans people. If you don't understand it, um, a little education can go a long way to helping you understand. Um, but even if you can't, just respect other people. Mm. I suppose you would agree with that on on every level. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, I think just respect and if you if you don't understand it, as Hugo said, um, educate yourself a little bit first before you comment on it, because uh, at least then we can have a discussion right, rather than just some sort of random argument that makes no sense. Um, and yeah, generally, if it doesn't affect you, then don't let it worry you. If you want to find out more about it, then for sure, come and have a chat um, or yeah, educate yourself or just be more accepting. If, if it if it really does not have anything to do with you then have that thought in your head does this have anything to do with me no it doesn't oh okay then and get on with your day <laughs> and are you um doing any events which the public can get involved with soon have you got anything kind of in mind well we we have uh we, do you mean on the trans side of things or no, just, no, in, just general? Uh, in general for well, the we have pride which is going to be huge so on the 10th of september we um will be parading through uh the center of guernsey and then having a big old camp party in the uh, <laughs> in the uh, market square um we're gonna have a lot of awareness events around that um i don't know how good you are at lip syncing ollie i am absolutely fantastic <laughs> cool <laughs> <That's> <laughs> so, <laughs> so we're, we're hopefully going to be kicking off our lip sync battle competition um so you'll have to listen out for more details we'll let you know um we will be having um a whole week's worth of events in between the two 
uh, Pride. So it starts on the 10th of September in Guernsey and runs all the way through to uh, the 17th in Jersey with the Equality and Diversity Awards on Friday. Um, so yeah, there's going to be a lot of things going on. In general, part of my job is also going to be um, engaging with the community and creating a load of community events uh, throughout the year. So that's a, one of the big things that we need to tick off. <laughs> so a lot for people to look out for. And yep. uh, you'll keep on updating us with the latest news. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, the, the, the stuff that we're actually going to be doing, you can find all on our Facebook page as well, which is Liberate uh, CI. Liberate CI on Facebook. Yep. And also your web page is liberate.gg. Yep. Fantastic. And liberate.je, if you're listening in Jersey, um, hopefully you're listening to us and not BBC Radio Jersey. That would be nice (laughs) to find out. But uh, for now, Ellie Jones and also Hugo Forrester from Liberate. Thank you very much indeed. Thanks for having us.